there, stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com. And in today's online class, we are going to be making some awesome pull tab flip cards. They're interactive cards, very, very fun to make. Uh, I have a whole set here. We'll make one full card and I'll show you how I colored the others as they're all made the same. Um, but they're just super fun. And I'm using a stamp set called Back on Your Feet from Stampin' Up. Super adorable. This just came out in the new catalog. However, these are fully customizable and you can use any stamp set and any sayings. And I, and I also brought in a wish for everything because it is just a great set and it's got everything. So if you wanted to change your occasions here, you absolutely could very easily just by switching the words that we're using on it. So. For those of you popping on board, we are filming this class line live. I like to say live in front of an in-home audience on Facebook. And um, as a thank you for watching us, whether you're live or whether you're watching a replay later on, if you leave a comment in this video, I have some drawings for you. So I have two, or actually three live prizes shown here, uh, three stamp sets that I'll be giving away at the end of this video and I will be drawing a winner for those based on the comments uh, right after this video and I will post them in the comments as well as on my winners page and on July 25th I will draw a winner from the replay um, and live drawing live comments that didn't win so that is for a pop-up scrap and everybody loves those and this one's not even available anymore it's one of the prettiest ones so that's a really good one be sure you leave a comment and if you share this video and type the word shared into the comments I will enter you a second time into that replay drawing Lots of goodies for you. All right, so are you dying to see how these are made? Let's jump right into uh, get the cards. So I've got three cards here, and I'm using the Stampin' Up! Brights color palette. Um, and so the, the colors here are, are almost all from the Brights. Here's our little flip. This one is uh, Mango Melody is our base color. This one is Bermuda Bay. So if you had an assortment of Brights cardstock and an assortment of the Brights designer series paper, you could make all these cards and then some. So I used their Design a Series paper. This is uh, actually kind of new styles in the new catalog. It's got all of the Brights colors in here, so it makes it really easy that we can do a full set with them. And there's uh, two different designs, double-sided. It's actually four different designs for each color. So that is a great way to get a lot of mileage out of, uh, out of your cards using the assortment packs when we have one color family here. And I want to give a shout out to Cynthia Smith, um, who created the uh, predecessor to this, this was a swap card. Linda and I did a live swap and we shared the swaps and this was one of the most popular votes that you wanted to see. So I said, all right, let's make it. So this was Cynthia's card and the swap, super cute. And this one was made with the Come Sail Away suite and you will find full de details on this card on my blog tomorrow, but we're gonna show you how to make it right now. And I love that what we're making right now is just a little variation on the class, the last class we did for this uh, photo booth uh, flip card, photo booth, um, film strip flip card with the cascading waterfall technique. So this isn't very different. It's just a little twist on that one. And if you love this, what I'm, well, if you love this one before I, I just, you can check out the video of for that on my stampwithtimmy.com blog. So I have a free PDF for you guys. I like to make it really easy for you to find all the information for everything that that I'm doing in the class. So you can download this on the resource page. Every video that I do has a resource page. And on it, there will be a free PDF. It has a photo, it has measurements, and it has a full supply list of everything we're doing in a place there for you to take notes if you need to. And if you have a smartphone and know how to use a QR code, you can just zap that with your phone. With an iPhone, it's just you just hold the camera up to it and it will automatically open the resource page. I like to make it that easy, right? But if you don't have a smartphone or don't know how to use that, um, you can type this right into your browser's URL, and that will bring you directly to this resource page. Again, same with every uh, video that you're watching. I also have a link in the video's description. If you are unsure, if you saw a video and are unsure how to find it, go to stampwithtammy.com and click on the video gallery. They'll all come up, and you should, or you can use the search box. So again, different ways to find it, but trying to make it easy for you. So here, the measurements are what's going to be the most important part of that, and it's really just our little flip tab that um, that hosts those uh, measurements that are important. So we are going to be using two different die sets for this. 
And these are basic die sets. Uh, if you don't have them, I would definitely recommend getting them on your wish list. And if your wish list is really big, you might want to look at my VIP online club because it's a great way to get your stuff in uh, budget and get free stuff and perks. This is the stitched rectangle die here. We'll be using the two largest stitched rectangle dies. I'm finding that very hard to say this morning. <laughs> and then we have the stitch shapes, which is definitely a staple because here we've got squares, circles, and ovals, and both of these die sets give you the look of stitching around the edges. So, through the magic of video, I have the cuts all done for you. I'm gonna show you which ones I did. So for the designer series paper, it was the second largest rectangle. I've got two cuts from the largest, um, the largest rectangle out of Whisper White. Again, this is all listed on that um, free PDF. I actually listed out what I did here. The, the largest and second largest square was cut from Bermuda Bay or whatever color that your card is. For example, this one, I'm using Mango Melody, so these colors would be Mango Melody. And any other color that you did, these two would be from that. And these uh, two are from the second and third largest out of Whisper White. And then we have our panel that we're going to have for our flip. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. We're going to start with our coloring. And lastly, our card base. So these are all the cuts that we need for this card right here. Again, listed on that free PDF. And the first thing we're going to do with the card base. Now, what ha what I do with the card base is I took a standard size 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. This is for those of you who might be new. And I cut this in half. And I'm taking our Simply Score tool here. And I'm going at four and a quarter, so that's halfway through, and I'm just going to score it. You can also use a bone folder and score it in half there. So that gives us our card base. There you go. All right, so next up, I am going to do our stamping and our coloring. The coloring is all done with Stampin' Blends. Now, I'm going to show you how I colored each of these. I'll do each of the animals, but we'll just make one card because they're all made the same ways. But the, the coloring is you know, slightly different on each of them. And I like coloring with the blends. I just find it very therapeutic. So I've got my blends palette here. And for those of you who are watching, I know this comes up every time I break out this, this little holder here. This is the, the lid. What you're looking at here is the lid to um, a, a plastic bin that I put my card stuff in. It's not a special holder for the, the blends. I just bought that bin at Target. But for some reason, it seems to be the most popular thing I bring out. <laughs> And we need some Memento Black Ink. So I'm going to stamp all three of the animals. First the giraffe because, oh, he's my favorite. I just love giraffes. So flipping cute. And then we've got our little turtle rolling around on his back and the sloth. Now, this is something I didn't notice until I started coloring the sloth. He's got a little bandage on his leg. See it right there in the image? He's got a little boo-boo. So all these are like little, for somebody who's got a little boo-boo, who's had a surgery recently, who's had some, just had some news that you want to make, you know, give him a little a smile for, you know, something that some, sometimes you just, sometimes people just need that. And this is a really cute one. But again, you can change the words, you can change the images and make it good for other occasions. It doesn't have to be for that reason. The, the, the actual technique that we're doing here can be done for any occasion. Okay, so let's start with our giraffe. I'm a lefty and he's on my left hand side, so I just felt it was natural that we'd start over there. I've got Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit while I'm coloring so you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> Tina, you like my Facebook profile? My Facebook profile is, uh, I was getting tongue slapped, they call it, by a giraffe at a safari. I was feeding him a carrot and he was standing behind me making this cute little face and I thought oh, I'm gonna take a selfie and when I held the camera up he 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 came around I didn't big big tongue and <laughs> slap me he was trying to get the carrots out of my hand oh my gosh I love it it's one of my favorite pictures so I'm just taking and this is light it's all right if you go over these spots I know we're going to do the spots again in um, soft suede, but it's okay if you go over them. So that's the light daffodil delight. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to touch a little bit of these pre-shaded areas with the darker 
Daffodil Delight. I'm sorry. This isn't Daffodil Delight. It's Mango Melody. My bad. Mango Melody. And Mango Melody is also the color of the card, so that's what makes the giraffe blend in with the card. Daffodil Delight would also look nice, though. They're both brights. And then I'm going to blend that darker color in with the lighter Mango Melody. If you were going coloring along with me and, and whipped out your Daffodil Delight, when I said Daffodil Delight, it would still look awesome. So that's all I'm going to do with the yellow. Just a little touch of a little touch of shading on that. And then we're going to break out the soft suede. And I've got, again, the light and the dark for his little spots because I, I, I want him to, to stand out. So I'm going to start with the light. And the reason why I start with the light is because these Stampin' Blends work best when the color is wet. So I like to color the whole image in with the light and then do the shading with the dark and come back and um, blend it in together. However, that is not the only technique and that's not the only way to use these. If you would rather start with the dark and then blend it, it works well that way too. It's all kind of personal, personal style and preference. So if you see, I'm just kind of touching a little bit on those spots just to make them pop. I'm sorry if my, I'm los you're losing my head. <laughs> Nobody cares about that, right? <laughs> You don't care if you see me. You only care about the about the coloring, right? Okay, so let's do a little bit on his little footsies. There we go. And our giraffe is done. And then we'll just go ahead. You know what? I've got soft suede out. So let's go ahead and do our sloth. So I've got the light soft suede here for the branch that he's just kind of hanging on. Hanging on. Hanging on to his branch. Feeling a little down. He needs a little pick me up. And we are just gonna shade that. So I've got a little dark, a little light, shading it together. And then we'll go ahead and take Granny Apple Green. And Granny Apple Green I'm gonna use on the turtle too. And I'm just doing the, the leaves. You know what? You, pro you, you may just be able to get away with just one. You probably don't need the combo on this, but I always like to add a touch of a, a touch of dimension when you add the little darker color there, just because I like it. Now the sloth I colored in purples. I don't know why. I just did. I liked it. I get that the, that sloths aren't really purple. So I've got Highland Heather here, and I meant to get black. I mean, I meant to get Rich Razzleberry. So I'm going to give you a little disclaimer. I accidentally grabbed the light Blackberry Bliss instead of the light Rich Razzleberry, but it'll have a very similar look. So I'm going to start with the lighter colors. I am doing a tutorial on the blender pens. When he's asking for a tutorial. Did you mean these or did you mean the other blender pen? This is a tutorial on the blender pens. <laughs> It's it's two in one. You get blender pens and you get a, a flip card. There you go. So here I'm just coloring him in all. In fact, I'm going to get his face light too. Just coloring him in all light. Get his little leg in there. You know what? Um, you bring up a good point. Lisa says she doesn't have Highland Heather. It's totally okay to, to change colors. I mean, you know what? Sloths aren't really purple. So if you wanted to make them pink, red, or any other color, you have artistic ability to do that. Go to town. Use your, your artistic license. That's the word I was looking for. Go to town because it's going to be adorable no matter what. I mean, you don't normally see a, a sloth with a bandage on his leg either, right? doesn't have to be real it just has to be sweet and something that's gonna make somebody smile okay so I'm highlighting him with the darker Highland Heather and then I'm gonna blend that in so what I basically did was his body with the lighter the Highland Heather and then his little mask that's what I'm using the darker color for it's a little dark in here And then I'll swap over to the darker colors. This was, again, this was meant to be um, Rich Razzleberry, but it'll look very similar. 
All right, so these uh, blender pens have two tips. There's a brush tip, which I've been using, and there's a nib tip. I find the nib tip to be easier when you're doing um, smaller areas. I did not mean to do the nib tip. I actually prefer the brush tip, but that's, again, personal preference. I will use that nib tip on smaller areas. So I've got the darker now. I'm using some darker on the mask. And our last little coloring, that's our sloth. Isn't he cute? Oh, I just love him. Our last little coloring we're going to do is the turtle. So I'm going to break Granny Apple Green back out. And I got light and dark. Again, I'm going to start with the light. And I'm going to, now for the Granny Apple Green, I just did the turtle body. His body's all green here. And then I'm taking the darker and just highlighting. Oh, thanks for the hearts, you guys. Thank you. And I do apologize. I am a lefty, which means that I'm going, oh, you can't always see what I'm doing. I try to hold my hand out of the way so you can see it. But, you know, I'm covering up some of these other little guys while I'm coloring. I promise I'll show them all to you again in the end for those of you who popped in late. So there's our turtle. I, I First, I colored him with the light granny apple green, added a little shading with the black, and then blended that in. Next, we're going to move to Pool Party for his shell. The shell is both Pool Party and Bermuda Bay. So what I did was I did Pool Party for the whole shell. So I'm going to start with the lighter. Color in the whole shell. And then highlight. Just I'm actually using just the natural um, shading that the artist did when they they drew this image with the dark the darker Bermuda Bay it's alright if you go over those spots we're gonna go over those spots again I'm sorry this is pool party I just called it Bermuda Bay but I didn't mean to alright so that is the outside of the shell yes Kathleen we have light and dark all of the all of the blender pens come in light and dark we need that to shade, absolutely. That's what makes it awesome. Actually, that's not all that makes it awesome. That's part of what makes it awesome. Okay, so I'm taking, this is the lighter Bermuda Bay. Another thing that makes it awesome is the colors are the same colors as the paper cardstock, as, as the ink pads, as the embellishments. Everything comes in this colors. For example, we're gonna be using cardstock and designer series paper on this card. As soon as I'm done coloring in Bermuda Bay, that's gonna match the Stampin' Blends, and that really pulls it all together. It makes such a big difference, and it's so hard to, to coordinate, you know, outside. It's just, I like that they just make it easy. And it's okay that I say it's like animals, right? We have matching everything because I feel like these little animals that we're, we're doing today are like animals. So what I'm doing is I colored with the light. I'm adding some highlights with the, the dark Bermuda Bay, and then I'm, I'm actually layering. I went over it again with a little bit more dark. And our images are all colored. So those are just how I colored them. A couple little tips on using the Stampin' Blend markers. Again, that whole color palette is listed on the free PDF that's on my blog, all the colors that I used here. And the next step is we're gonna take our paper snips and you're gonna trim out your animal. Gonna do that old school with fussy cutting, and you know what? It really wasn't that really wasn't that bad. I actually kind of enjoyed it. Kind of like coloring; it's kind of therapeutic for me. And through the magic of video, ta-da! I'm just gonna move forward with the turtle since the rest of this card is going to the what we're doing with the technique is gonna be the same on all three cards. Okay, so we've got our card base already. We've pre-cut for those of you who have popped in later. We've pre-cut all of our pieces here. We've got two large rectangles out of white, one of the second largest rectangle from these are from the stitch rectangle dies. These here I've got large and second largest stitched shapes squares out of the main color that you're using. I'm using Bermuda Bay on this one and the second and third largest from uh, Whisper White out of that same one. Now this here we've got six and a quarter by two inch strip. This is going to be our pull tab. I'm going to bring that simply score tool right back and we are going to score that at 
two and two and a quarter. So this actually comes with our little scoring tool. We've got our little measurements on there. It makes it so easy. We're just gonna score that, put a little scoring line at two, find the two and the quarter, which really isn't that far away, and go ahead and put another little scoring line there. And then if you have a, a bone folder, you can burnish that so that they're nice and flat. See, it's, if you've watched our the last video I did on the um, film strip photo booth film strip card with the um, the waterfall technique, this isn't all that different. It's a very similar technique. It's just a slightly different take on it. Okay, so next we're going to take the um, the scallop topper punch, the lightful tag topper. It's called. I'm going to use this upside down. It does have little guides here to put it in, but I wanted to see exactly, this is the long end of it. Yeah. I wanted to see exactly, because I just want to do the very, very tip here. I didn't, I wasn't sending it all the way to the, to the end. And that cuts our pull tab and it's even got a hole already in it. How easy is that? Okay, so next up, I'm going to bring back in our little pieces here. We're going to do a quick little stamping. Kathleen says she doesn't have these dies and wants measurements. I don't have a measuring tape here for you. The largest is uh, two and a half. They're squares. The second largest is two, and these are the outside. The inside would be a quarter inch smaller. Everything else is standard sized. So if you didn't have the stitch rectangle die, you have your your standard size card. It's five and a half by four and a quarter. So your, your next frame down would be a quarter inch smaller, five and a quarter by four inches, and then the next one down from that would be a quarter inch smaller than that. And that's how you can kind of do standard size. Every frame is a quarter inch smaller. There you go. Okay, back to the stamping. So I'm going to quickly do the uh, the words on this before we attach. So we're going to stamp at the um, at the very top of the larger of the squares. Hope things get better soon. I didn't like how I stamped that, so let's flip it. Ooh. We're not going to flip it over. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> We're just going to go with that one. I don't know if my turtle will cover it. If my turtle covers it, I can redo. Yep, turtle covers it. All right. See, I told I'm not just here for how to do things. I'm here for how to fix things, right? I'm like, like a little doctor there, right? We can go ahead and attach that turtle and cover up our little boo-boo on there. I will say these two dies that I'm using are staples. Um, if you don't have them, I would definitely add them to your wish list. Tell Santa that's what you want for Christmas, especially the stitch shapes because it's got all the shapes and they layer. Okay, so this is going to be our little flip inside, and it's going to say, "Hope you get back on your feet soon." How cute is that, right? Because he's you know rolling around on his back. And uh, let's see, yeah, all right? Is that the one I want? No, that's the one we just used. Ah, all right, whatever. I did them backwards, but whatever. <laughs> this one's not going to fit exactly. I meant to do this one on the front, but it's okay. I'm doing it at an angle just because it, it might have, like, touched on that side. It's all good. And then for the inside, we're going to stamp words. Again, this is customizable. If you want to make it for something different, use use a different word set and, and use it for something different. But how cute is this, okay? So I'm, ta I'm take all these are from that same stamp set. I'm going to stamp ouch, which reminds me of E.T., Ouch. <laughs> Sometimes that's all there is to say and then I'm here for you. I love this. I actually have somebody that I want to send this to. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our basic card assembly. Okay, so this is going to be a layer here. So, oh, thanks for the hearts. You guys are the best.
Now, before we attach anything, actually, we're going to attach the two square the the two square panels to their frames. But before we attach anything else, we've got to do a couple little things that to make this an interactive flippy card. All right, going to back you back out now, so we can see a little bit more of what's happening. Aw, oh, thanks for the love. Right back at you guys. All right, so before we attach this, we need to make a notch for our pull tab to come out. So I've got the classic label punch die. I'm going to do that right in the middle. I'm going to punch that right out of the middle of the card. All right, and then we are going to, let's see, we can go ahead and attach the two squares to our pull tab. And when you do that, I prefer to use something a little bit stronger. I'm using the tear tape as opposed to sticky strip. It would probably be okay to use, um, I mean, oh my gosh, snail. I'm drawing a blank on the names. It would probably be okay to use snail on this one. but So what I did was I put two on that big flap. I put one in the middle. See where the, the middle of that score line is? All right, so we'll go ahead and, and peel the first two off first. I, I'm doing this one at a time, one block at a time. Okay. Now on this first block, it's the smaller, the smaller of the two. And then we'll rip off this second one. Got a little overhang there. And we'll attach the larger one. So I've only got adhesive right there on that little piece. And make sure that you're attaching it. So it's facing the right way. The words are facing the right way. Well, thank you, Rosanna. She says she's loving the online classes. Okay, so. Last up. Now, I did not put those on straight, so I'm going to reattach here. That looks a lot better from the back. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of sticky strip goes on the back of the small square. It's actually the tab here on the back of the small square on the very end. One piece of strip, strip there. Of tear tape, fast fuse, sticky strip, whatever strong adhesive you have. This particular part, you want a strong adhesive. If you, if you cheat and use snail on the other two, you might be okay, but this part, you don't want to cheat and use snail. You want something as strong. Okay. So I'm sticking the pull tab end through. Now I'm going to line this before I, before I let that sticky strip touch the card, because once it touches it, it's stuck, right? I'm going to line this up on the front so that it is right smack dab in the middle. And then I'm going to press down and that's going to stick that adhesive that we just put on that little piece to the card. And that's what's going to make the pull. Okay, what did I do wrong here? No, that's right. I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. It, that, there it goes. <laughs> Took me a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so that's it. That's our, that is how you do that. And then we're just going to attach this to our card using Stampin' Dimensionals. All right, Mackenzie says it's a perfect, perfect choice of words for this, for the flip card. Hope you get back on your feet again. Get it because he flipped. <laughs> so cute. And I love the, the giraffe, the saying uh, with the giraffe and it says that's not good and it's K-O-N-K-N-O-T, the giraffe. Hold on, I'll find him. This is not good. Get it? He's knotted up. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, so dimensionals are gonna stick that. I don't have one on here because, and I don't have one underneath it because I want this to pull. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be able to move. So you don't want that piece to be sticky. So we're gonna stick that down. There it is. Super easy, right? And then we'll just go ahead and take, this is some flax the ribbon that we sell. Okay. 
and I'll just cut off a little piece of that, stick it through. Now, instead of tying that in a knot, what I did was I took some of the linen thread, cut a little piece and tied it around that because I just thought it looked cuter. Again, the same on all the, all the cards in the set. They were all done the exact same way. And I used the Brights color palette so you could get a whole assortment of Brights cardstock and an assortment and the uh, Brights um, designer series paper. And some Whisper white cardstock and you could go to town making these cards. Right? Because that's all there is. Or you could purchase the, the cardstock individually. Either one on that one. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that flax at a little bit of an angle. Super cute. If you wanted to, you could even fray the ends of that. Make it a, a little, give it a little bit of interest in there. And the very last piece, oh, that one frayed a lot better. But usually you can just pull it and it'll fray. The very last piece of this card, I attached some sequins to it. The sequins are from the Iridescent Sequin Assortment. Just taking the Take Your Pick tool. And you're going to need a slightly bigger envelope, Jeannie, that's all. You can mail it, but hand cancel. Anything that's got some, anything that's got a little height on it, hand cancel. Okay, so there was a little bit of a trick to putting the sequins on, I think, with a glue dot. So what I did was I put the glue dots on first. And on this guy, also, I'm, I'm just going to give a shout out here. Not every card goes in the mail. Sometimes these are hand delivered, especially if you've got somebody who ended up, you know, having, you know, a broken limb or something from a soccer game or a sprained whatever. And they're, you know, at home, you want to pop in and, and say hello to them. So what I'm doing here is lifting the mini glue dots with the take your pick tool. And I'm putting them on the card directly before I put the, the um, sequin on. Okay, so, and I also want the sequin to be right side up. That's just me. And then that sticks right to it. I just found that was the easiest way. And I am looking for the sequins that match. Oh, but they're so fun, right? I mean, you have to have bling. There's another blue one. And our card is complete. There we go. Oh, thanks for the hearts, you guys. Love you. Uh, and I've got a couple of things to show you here. And if you're if you're popping in late, we have a full set. You do definitely want to go back and, and check out the beginning because I've got Mr. Sloth here. So cute. This little bandaged leg. And we've got the uh, giraffe. This is not good. Again, easily you can change out the sayings or the stamp sets for just about anything. But this A Wish for Everything has stamps and sayings for everything. If you want to customize that. Here is another sample. You will find this one on my blog tomorrow. This one from Cynthia Smith using the Come Sail Away suite. The stamp set, the dies, the designer paper on that, super cute. And lastly, I wanted to show you another one. This actually is from Danella Henderson. She participated in a card swap and she sent this in. Super cute and that's that little sloth again. And uh, it was made just made with the back on your feet stamp set just showing you another cute little idea. Alrighty. Well, that is our online class for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget the free PDF is on the resource page and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining me.